I'm Matt Tompkins, and today I'm going to show you a technique for creating a rack of EQ bars using only e expressions. So let's get started. Go to Composition, New Composition. And the composition name I'll have as EQ Rack, and the preset NTSC DV. Uh, I'm going to go to Layer, New Solid. I'm going to call this EQ Bar. And the width I've got set to 40, height 200, uh, the colour uh, red, that doesn't really matter. Here we are, first of all I'm going to hold down the Y key and I'm just going to shift this anchor point here right down to the base of our solid. So let's zoom in, just make sure that is actually at the base. Okay. Next, I'm going to create a null. So we layer new null object. Is our null? Just move it out of the way. And I'm going to go to Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control, and I'm just going to lock this uh, effect panel for the moment. So I'll select the EQ bar, press the S key to bring up the scale. And I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click the stopwatch uh, beside scale. And I'm going to grab the pick whip here and I'm just going to associate that with the slider here. So I can unlock this panel. And if I look here at the expression that's been created, I have a temp, which is a variable, equaling this comp, the comp we're in. Uh, the layer is our no one layer and it's the effect on that layer called slider control and it's the slider here and on the next line we have this temp uh, variable is controlling our x and the y values of our scale so if we go here you can see that we're increasing the scale of our eq bar um, just using the slider now you can, might see there's a slight problem here, we're affecting the X and the Y, um, so I'll just return us to zero. So in here, I'll just change the X value to be 40, and the Y, so we're just using the Y value here, uh, is being affected by our slider. So now we can see, by dragging our slider, we're only affecting the Y. Let's go in here. The expression again and maybe make it a bit wider, say 80. Now we can see we're controlling uh, the y value. So you can notice here we're actually uh, if we're going to minus values on our slider, we're seeing we're going beneath what might be seen as the floor. Uh, and also, there's no limit to how high this EQ bar is rising. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm going to click on the uh, stopwatch beside slider. I'm going to type in a bit more of a complex expression here. Now bear with me, I'll type it out first and then I shall explain exactly what that expression is doing. So I'll declare a variable, let's call that EQ, and that's equal to value plus wiggle open brackets and we'll have this set to 8 times a second comma uh, let's make this 70 uh, and the next line, close brackets next line I'll type in if open brackets EQ is uh, greater than or equal to and let's have a look at the top of our slider it's about 136 so we're typing 136, close brackets, then EQ equals exclamation mark value plus let's say 100. I'm pressing the large enter key on the next line. We're typing if EQ is lesser than or equal to zero close brackets, EQ equals exclamation mark value, let's say 
plus 5, the next line, EQ. Okay, um, so yeah, if uh, you find that expression off putting, don't worry, I'll just explain uh, exactly what it's doing now. So here we're declaring a variable, uh, again, which is equal to the value of our slider. So you'll be reading the current value, which is 136, or if I change this to 26, so I'm picking one, but it's also applying the wiggle here. So I'm dragging that, so we have a value, and then it's wiggled it to 49.48. So it's the value plus the wiggle. Okay, and on the next line, if the yeah, slider goes to a minus. We're just going to make sure that it pops it up to a positive value. Um, so on this line, we can see I've added five, and what I've used here is the value of before the value. I've added an exclamation mark, which basically is flipping the value. So anything beneath zero is flipped into a positive. If it goes to minus five, it's a plus five. So it's flipped in this case. And I just made the value just set to 5. And the same also applies to the higher higher values. So if I come up here to oops, if I come up here to uh, increase the value, um, you can see it doesn't go above say 100 here. So no matter how high I drag. If I bring this down, the same place it stay here, and if I uh, now sort of render this, we can see now that our EQ bar is nicely animating uh, without any keyframes. And okay, what we can do is we can duplicate this EQ bar a few times. Uh, let's do this holding down the control or command on the Mac and the D key. One, two, three, four, five. So we've got five separate EQ bars. Let's drag these out. Okay, I think that should be all of them. Now we have our EQ bars. You can see they're all actually moving in uh, unison, which isn't exactly the look I'm going for, and what you're going for. But in this case, I'd like to add a bit more sort of randomization as the movement. So I'm going to go back to my null, and I'm going to highlight the slider control. And again, I'm going to hold down uh, Command or Control and D key, duplicate one, two, three, four. Five. And so here we have uh, duplicates of our slider control. So I'll just leave the first EQ bar as it is, and then I'll select the rest, hold down the shift key, and select the top and the bottom. And if I hold down EE in quick succession, I've got access to the expression controls. So here, as I explained sort of earlier on, we've got the temp equals. So all I need to do is just change. Um, Find them again. Just lock that in place. So all I need to do is I just need to change the slider control to a different one we've got in the window here. So this one I can assign to two. So I just space two. So we just change the name here. And the next one, I'm also going to do the same, and I'm going to change that to three. The next one, four. And the next one, five. And then finally, six. Okay, so now we've got each of our, uh, our EQ bars assigned to a different uh, control there, which is obviously applying uh, a random wiggle effect onto each one of them. 
let's do a quick run preview. You can see that they're all merrily waving away. Okay, and just to push this up a bit more, I can go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. And like this at the moment, just with my adjustment layer selectors, I'm going to go to Effect, uh, Generate Ramp. And here I'm going to have to start color, set that to red. The end color, set that to green. Um, see over here. I have to just change the white, bring the green to be somewhere like that. A nice uh, green levels there, and then I'm going to bring down the red so you can see that our levels go from green to orange uh, to red. On this adjustment layer, I can also add stylize and glow. See the glow is a bit too strong there, so I'll just increase the radius. Just put that out a little bit. And the threshold. Just to bring out these uh, the yellow oranges a bit more. Maybe just lower the brightness a little. What I can also do is I can also add motion blur. And again apply that to all of our layers. And if I render this. That's looking a lot nicer now. Now I can also do, if I take all of these layers, just select them all, hold down Control or Command on the Mac, Shift and C to pre-compose. Let's call this EQ bars. Move all attributes into the new composition. Okay. What I can do is I can take this uh, this comp here. And then I hold it down Control or Command D to duplicate it. Then the second one, press R for rotation, type in 180. We've uh, turned that around. Press S for scale. Then the X value here, type in minus 100 just to flip that over. And P for position. And then bring down the Y value. Okay, so now we've got a flipped reflection of sorts. If we go here, I can go to Effect and I think Transition, Linear Wipe. If I change this to 180 degrees, I'll uh, do the Transition Completion here. Different kind of level, and then feather that off. You see, we've kind of got a falling off of light effect. And I can also maybe go to blur, some fast blur to that. And you can make it look as though these different surfaces it's been reflected on. Okay. I can take maybe both of these, both of these layers. Again, I can sort of move them so they're a bit more central. And holding down my zero key, my numerical keypad, just to run preview those. You can see the results of our labor. Now, looking at this, we can see um, what we've got is quite a complex animation, really. If you're going to keyframe all of these, it would take you a long time, I know, because I've done it before. Um, but obviously, using expressions, this is a lot quicker. Uh, and I hope you've kind of learnt or perhaps sort of discovered some new uses for expressions today that you can go away and experiment with. Again, my name is Matt Tompkins. Thank you for watching. Happy After Effecting.